If you work in mining, whether you're in HR, geology, operations, or finance, your job could be gone in two years. And no, it's not because of government labor or regulations, it's because of this AI, artificial intelligence. But before you panic or you log off, let me show you what's really going on. By the end of this video, you'll either be the one surfing the wave or watching your job vanish like a fax machine in 2005. So here we go. Let's stop pretending. AI is not the future. It's already here and it's moving faster than you think. And here's the reality. In just one day, a Chinese startup called DeepSeek released an AI model that shook the entire global tech industry. It was so good, it wiped a trillion dollars of the values of companies such as Nvidia and Microsoft. That's in one day, 24 hours. That's how fast this is moving. The ground is shifting beneath our very feet. While we're still updating our PowerPoint templates from 2015, 2018. So I still think mm, I'm in mining, so I'm pretty safe. Let's talk about that. So you are a mind planner. Today, AI can generate multiple mind plans in seconds. It can simulate scenarios and optimize costs. All while you're still formatting that beautiful spreadsheet you've been building for 12 years. Maybe you're in geology and you're thinking, no, this is pretty hardcore. AI is now building 3D geo models from seismic, satellite, or drill hole data. What used to take weeks, AI can now do in a couple of hours. But maybe you're an HR and you're thinking that human touch simply cannot be automated. AI today allows you to screen CVs, it matches your skills to job descriptions, it runs initial interviews, schedules assessments, and gives you feedback in real time. That's instantly. And yes, it does this better than most of us. But you're probably thinking, I'm not in HR, I don't really care about geology, I'm in procurement. You know those 200 page contracts that you are meant to review? AI can scan contracts, it can flag risks, it can compare prices across thousands of vendors, and it can suggest alternative suppliers, Again, all in real time. Maybe a sustainability manager, the chief sustainability officer for a big organization. AI today is being used to compile ESG reports. It's being used to track uh, your carbon, to predict community risks, even writing the stakeholder engagement summaries that you are paid to draft. And if you're thinking, but I, I bring judgment, I bring relationships, I bring EQ. Sure, but ask yourself this, is that enough to compete with an AI that never sleeps, it never gets sick, and it's improving every 10 days or so. If Riley had this before, that AI will only replace repetitive, low-skill jobs. Nope, I'm here to tell you that's really not true. And we're starting to see evidence across the different disciplines. AI is now replacing cognitive work, white-collar jobs, your job, my job, everyone's job. It started with analytics, then came machine learning, then content creation. And now we're in the age of reasoning models. AI that can think in steps, solve problems, plan and act. And next up, and this is currently underway, a genetic AI. That's AI that doesn't just assist, it acts on your behalf. It will book your travel, optimize your maintenance schedules, order your equipment and suggest staffing changes all on its own. So from assistant to agent, from helpful to autonomous, Yes, the scary part. It's already started. Maybe let me borrow a metaphor from one of these leadership experts, Michael Watkins. He talks about two images that help or can help you frame how you want to play the AI game. One is a dinosaur staring at an asteroid. The other, a sapphire riding a massive wave. Which one are you? That's really your choice. You either stand still and admire the chaos as it destroys you, or you pedal like hell, learn fast and ride the wave. In Africa, we've done the dinosaur thing before. It didn't work out well. And we're still playing catch up on AI adoption. We don't really have time to wait anymore. And maybe let me break this down into three things or three actions that I think you can take today uh, to ensure that you are rather riding the wave and not that dinosaur staring at a meteor or an asteroid. One, learn to prompt like a pro. The way we interact with AI is through prompts, whether verbal or text. Questions, instructions, tasks, the better your prompts, the better the AI's output. Start experimenting. Use tools such as ChatGPT, Claude, Gemini, 
or any local model that you may use, want to maybe write better board reports, prompt it. Want to redesign your training modules, just prompt it. Want a recruitment ad optimized for maybe women engineers somewhere in Rustenburg. Yep, you got it, prompt it. Just start prompting. The second thing that I think we need to do is more of a caution that as much as it's tempting to think that AI is always correct, it is important that you stop believing in the optimism bias. AI systems are trained to make you feel good. They want you to be happy, but happy doesn't mean right, right? When AI says everything will balance out, challenge it. As what's the worst case scenario? Give me the brutal truth. What would you say if I told you not to be optimistic, to be not pessimistic per se, but to sort of achieve a level of realism? That's when you get the truth. The third thing, and maybe the most important, is that we need to upskill ourselves like our lives depend on it. Learn uh, a few different things. One, digital tools. Uh, there are also other things that you need to learn, improve your data literacy, AI operations, human-machine collaboration, cross-functional thinking. And if you're over 40, don't assume that your experience will protect you. No. And if you're under 30, don't assume that your youth makes you future-proof. Everyone is vulnerable and everyone needs to adapt today. This is not hype. This is a historic shift, the biggest change to work since the invention of the assembly line. We're not going back to normal. There's no undo button. The genie is out of the box and it's not going back in. So here's the deal. In my view, those who embrace AI in their equipment, operations, supply chain, and decisions across the mining value chain will thrive. Those who delay, deny, or debate for too long, those are the guys that will fall behind and eventually they will disappear. Which one are you going to be? If this episode left you with reality, great. That is really the point. Now, I hope you go and share with someone who still thinks that maybe AI is just a face. As always, like, Comment, subscribe, and share the video with those that you think will benefit from it. This is Mining901. I'm Aburengui. Let's ride the wave together.